Hello everyone and welcome to part two in my look at the Weber rotisserie that I've got over the top of my Weber Spirit 2 premium gas grill. Today we're going to be making gyros. I've got a lamb four quarter, we're going to be cutting it up, deboning it, uh, slicing it into nice thin slices to go on the spit. We've got a spice mix we're going to make up, a little bit of marinade in that and uh, we're going to see what kind of product we can produce to see how the Weber rotisserie holds up in this process if we can get it nice and tightly packed in um, so that, they, that the, all the meat together spins nicely, cooks uh, really tenderly. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the product that we get at the end. Let's get into it. Let's make up our spice mix. Okay, let's get on and make our spice mix or our rub. I've got, as you can see, I've only got a small mortar and pestle. Uh, obviously, if you keep yours on the bench as a decoration, don't forget to wipe it out before you do this. Otherwise, who knows what else you'll be uh, introducing into the rub. Time, one tablespoon. Coriander, one tablespoon. Oregano, oregano. I think you want the sweeter rather than the smokier type of paprika for this. Now we've got cumin, one tablespoon of that. Dried garlic, two teaspoons of this one. Okay, here's our Euros rub. Let's get on to dealing with this lamb. Okay, well. Here we have half our four quarter of lamb. Now, I do not profess to be a butcher, so if you're looking for a video on how to butcher lamb, this is definitely not the one you wanna watch. Like any professional YouTuber, my experience at this consists of watching someone else's YouTube video in how to cut this up and probably forgetting most of it, but let's have a go. Okay, so I can see we've got some uh, ribs here which we wanna try and cut off, so. The other thing uh, you might get to see here is uh, classic YouTube YouTuber injury. I'm just gonna get our knife in there. Once again, just, if I was a better butcher, there'd definitely be more I could get off that, but for now that'll do. Okay, so we've got the bones out after, what, 20 minutes? But, learning experience for everyone. All right, now let's just cut, start cutting up our meat strips. I think this piece here. All right, let's see if this cleaver does me any better. So, these are the strips that are going to be going on the spit now, so yeah, one to two centimetres thick. Keep them thin, they'll cook quickly, and you don't really need to marinate them for any extended period of time just because of that surface area. Possibly just put a cut down here, and butterfly it out a bit, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's got, that's got potential. All right. 
this will be sped up from now. You can add your own interpretation as you cut up your own meat. Or, hey, let's face it, if you, uh, you don't want such agricultural cuts of meat as what I've produced, I'm sure you could ask your butcher to create a, a value-added product that's already been cut up, maybe even one that's already uh, sitting in a marinade or something like that. Okay, so here's our bowl of, of lamb deboned. The rest of the rub can go on now and we'll, we'll leave that sit for a, I don't know, like I said before, you don't really need to leave it sit. I'm just gonna let it for about, an, what is it? Yeah, probably about half an hour or so. And then I'll make a start on the grill. It's probably just gonna give me enough time to get it set up and then I still have to I still have to put the meat on the rotisserie itself, which is going to take a bit of time. So, watch me mix it up and then we'll come back when it's time to stack the meat on the rotisserie. Okay, everyone, well, welcome back. Now, let's get this meat onto this spit. Now, I must admit, look, off the bat here, I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced that this is going to be the best experience that it could be because as you remember, if you'd watched the previous video, the Weber rotisserie spit splits into different pieces to make it easy uh, to make it easy to transport and or easy for them to ship out to you and all that sort of stuff. Now I've got to I've got to try and get these strips of meat over the top of these bumps here, which means that it's going to put holes in the meat that are bigger than the ones that get made down the end. I'm not I'm not entirely convinced it's going to go so well, but I guess I have to play with what I've got. The other thing I have to be a bit mindful of, and this isn't anything to do with Weber, is that I balance the meat uh, on the center of the spit. I don't quite know how big the stack is gonna be. It's gonna end up like a big sort of sausage, I suppose, a bit like a, a bit like you'd see if you went to a kebab shop and you saw the, <clears throat> the, the meats that they have there, which they, they then shave off. We're sort of going for that, but instead of the product, the sort of processed product that they use, we're using, um, you know, just raw meat. Um, raw lamb so let's um let's crack onto this and let's just let's just see how we get on and I'll, I'll give you commentary along the way we've got our first prong in position um and let's just start putting meat on now i want to find a nice one so here we go so that goes over there all right then we've got to sort of bump its way down and then we get to here and it seems to be not ideal, uh, if it, look, if I'm honest, but let's just see how we go. All right, now we want get, to get it onto this. You can see how this is potentially a bit of a dangerous. There we go. All right, first piece in position. Now, as we stack up the next pieces, we want to get, we want to get them on nice and tight. But let's see how we go. All right, it's going to be some. So yeah, I'm not going to torture you, making you watch this in in real time. So you can see how I went with the magic of four times speed. Okay, I'm almost at the last two pieces. Uh, these pieces are left, well this is just fatty, I'm not going to put it on, but I've got two nice pieces to go on the end before we cut the cap. As you can see, my balancing is okay, uh, it leans off a bit towards this side, we'll just have to monitor that in the cut. In terms of hangers on, well, there's a bit, but I think that should be okay. Anyway, let's put our end prong on. If anything, it's just gonna lock it, lock it all together. All right, there's a stick of meat for you. All right, let's kind of get that barbecue going. A bit worried about this piece here though. Just pull that off. 
put him on the outside. Okay, we've got the Weber on. We've got the uh, power cord is dangling nicely out the window. Now we're going to go get the Euros and throw it on. To properly cook your Euros, you want to get the internal temperatures up first on low heat, about 140 to 150 degrees Celsius. When your internal temperature gets up to around about 50 degrees Celsius, that's when you crank the heat and then you can start crisping the outside of the Euros to get that good uh, barbecue charcoal texture and flavour. Okay, we're about 10 minutes into the process, and I know what they say, if you're, uh, if you're looking, you're not cooking, but I've just come out to check the temp, which seems to be going okay. Here's the settings on the E320, just the one burner on at the moment, and uh, only on, I'd say at about two thirds, uh, two thirds speed. Now I'm just gonna open it, just to check that, yeah, that's getting along nicely. Nothing's fallen off yet, I can see, so cool. cool. This guy here is a bit. Let's move him back in. But yeah, that's that's looking good. Let's um, close it up. Okay, we've been cooking low for about an hour now. Uh, I've got my probe. I'm gonna have a look at the internal temp. This is what the product looks like. I'm sorry about that. Here we go. Right in the shadow of the light, unfortunately. But yeah, it looks like it's actually going really nicely. Um, this is about the point where I think I want to turn up the heat to crisp. To crisp the outside. Oh, I might have to do something about that piece though. That's almost falling off. Um, I'll get the probe, stick it in, see what we can find. Okay, so I've got the probe in probably the thickest part of the, uh, the roll, I suppose, of the disc. And let's look at the temp. So, it's telling me about 46 degrees. So, I reckon that we're pretty much, since that's right in the center. <coughs> I think we're right to turn up the rest of the burners. Let's crank up that temp, shall we? Alright, let's get it going again. Finish it off. Okay, so I have an issue with the record there, but here is our finished product, and I'll tell you how I did it. You might be wondering how did I get it off the rotisserie in the end? Well, the what was a bit of a, a problem at the start sort of helped us out at the end, because what I did was I unscrewed uh, the spit, and then used a, a knife and some tongs to push one half the meat off one side, and one half off the other side, and this is what it's produced, so. That's nice looking lamb. Pink in the middle, crispy on the outside. I think it's gonna go great. I'm gonna make some pocket bread in a second. <coughs> um, the first cut that I took off while I was on the barbecue, that's that there. So that's a bit a bit that's a little bit more cooked, so I suppose you can just mix the two together. How did the Weber rotisserie go with cooking gyros? Well, as we know, the compatibility with the Weber Barbecue is great. And the Weber Barbecue, that's really what the strong point is here. You can get an easily set temperature. I didn't even know how I was going to get 150, but a really small amount of turning the dials. You got me that 150 for an hour. No dramas. Wasn't climbing, wasn't falling. It was a really easy setup. Boost the temperature up. Yeah, you've got to watch for fat fires. Might have had a small one, but that's a problem with any barbecue. The rotisserie itself, yep, you've got that screws together coupling. Possibly a little bit of a pain getting the meat on, but helped us out getting it off. So I think you could live with that for the ease of use, the compatibility with the barbecue, the rotisserie, 
did a good job. I'd recommend it. All right, I'm just gonna get together these pocket breads. I'll show you a finished product in the end, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, see I made myself a little pocket bread here, not the prettiest thing in the world, but a little bit of um, Greek salad, homemade tzatziki, some of lamb. Let's try it. That's really nice, really good lamb flavors coming through. That's definitely worth it. That's a good product. I'm glad I made that. Just so you know, it's a first time attempt. So look, anyone with a someone who's willing to give something a go, hack something together, you can make a pretty good product. And as you can see, there's there's he, there's heaps of serves here. I know it was forty five dollars for the lamb, but you could probably get six six good servings out of here. So that's great. All right, I'm going to enjoy my well earned dinner. I'll see you in the next chapter of the Weber Rotisserie.